Rahubat, Rahubat, greetings, family, Rahubat, Moesar. So we've got um, another three questions um, from, I think it's Matthias. So let's get straight into the questions. Remember, you can send your questions too. Anyone who would like to send three questions, video yourself, um, just like how Matthias has done and send them to us. Let's get straight into the questions. Here we go. Greetings. My name is Matias and I'm from Chile. I'm very pleased to meet you guys. And these are my three questions. My first one is about meditation. I meditate every day. I know we are electromagnetic beings and I want to know how does actually meditation works. Okay, so I've just paused it. That's um, question one. Um, he wants to know about meditation and how meditation actually works. Um, when you look at the word meditation, um, what's about, you know, we like to break down the word. So, medi, you can hear the word, middle, medium, in the middle, yeah, center. So, meditation is really about focusing the mind, yeah. And um, when you focus the mind, you're trying to control your thoughts um, because you have you know, your, your conscious world when you're awake and you're assimilating and picking up a lot of information, some you don't know is going into your subconscious, which we can come back to in a bit. But meditation is about you being able to control your mind. There are different forms of meditation. And how it actually works is that, like I've explained about the ethers, right? So um, from zero to nine, going upwards, and you can go zero the other way, minus one, minus two, minus three, etc., to minus nine. Middle, you being in the middle, it's about you centering yourself and focusing the mind to concentrate and achieve certain things. There are different types of meditation. Um, there's like mindful meditation. There's like you trying to really achieve something and to be able to bring that energy that you're connecting to, um, you have to be able to concentrate. The reason I gave you the ethers is because what you're doing is aligning yourself and connecting to be able to receive what we call out formation. Remember the word in is dealing with where you're in, inside of something, you know, inside the planet, inside your house, inside, you know what I mean? Whereas when we say out, it's everything that's outside yourself, outside your house, outside the planet. And you can communicate anywhere in the boundless universes. And you have different beings vibrating on the different frequencies on the different realms, including your own ancestors. This is why in the religious world, they'll refer to this as the familiar spirits. So what you're doing you have a connection to these different realms by way of your pineal gland, the pituitary gland, because when people talk about meditation, a lot of the times they relate it to like Hinduism or Buddhism, because these are the, the practices where those um, religions or way of life they focus on. But the thing is that when they do that, they don't actually really cover what came before that, which is dealing with African spirituality. Every person, everyone on the planet has a link, a connection, right? Through the different ethers. And when you're meditating, what you're really doing is trying to connect to receive out information into information or things from outside, from um, even your subconscious, because the subconscious deals with, when you hear the word sub, um, you're dealing with s underneath, like submarine, submental, subliminal. So it's there, but it's under, right? And you're not even thinking it's there. And I gave that example with like the submarine, because submarines are really deep underwater. They're there, but you don't know they're there. And the submental deals with under your mental, which is this area here, where it's, it's submental the submental region. Um, and the reason I'm saying that is because you're constantly receiving messages, information, and you're storing this 
in your being, in your matrix, in your cells, in your memory. So when you sit down to meditate, meditating properly is not an easy thing to do. It takes time. You have to practice. You have to be relaxed. You have to have the right environment. You have to be able to concentrate. And so all of this takes time. And even though you can do it initially, you know, like in small doses until you get, you know, better at it, then you can extend the time. But how it actually works is you focusing and opening up your third eye, opening up your pineal gland, because a lot of people's glands are calcified, which means it's closed. It's there, but it's closed. So you have to activate it. You have to be able to open it. And once you open it, you can then be able to communicate. That's what you're really doing. You're communicating, but not using your mouth, yeah? You're using your mental cap capability or mental power. And that mental power can go, as I said, transcend and receive messages. And it could be to your, to beings on those different realms, which could be your own family, your own uh, ancestors, or other beings, extraterrestrials, etc., that are in different, um, you know, vibrations, different realms. So what you're doing is is practicing to focus the mind, to silence the thoughts, to to kind of like put the conscious mind on hold, whilst you tap into the subconscious, and the subconscious does things without you even knowing, and this deals with your emotional state, your reaction. Um, actions and things that you do without even realizing it. That also ties into what we call voluntary and involuntary actions. Voluntary actions are mainly things to do with your conscious mind. You know, you say, I'm going to move my hand, then you move your hand. You say something you're going to do, then you do it. Whereas when you're dealing with involuntary actions, these are actions that are taking place whether you like it or not, such as your breathing such as your heart's beating. You know, there are things you're doing, your eyes blink. You know, you, you, sometimes you're, you can't control it, it just happens. So these are what we call involuntary actions. So when you're actually meditating, what you're doing is you're focusing and being able to control and tap into the subconscious or the things that you're not aware are there and working against or for you. This is why I mentioned about submarine, subconscious, submental, because the psychologists, the marketers, the people who study psychology and know how the mind works, they sub is when it's hidden, right? So they know that if I can get you to do something without knowing you're doing it, it's actually much better. So when I mention subliminal programming, this is like you could go out and watch a movie, which was changed from the word sin or cinema because they, they get you to sin through the movies, meaning that if you know how movies work, it's a lot of images in frames, right? Um, most people are used to like 25 pr um, frames per second, but these images are moving so quickly because you're taking so many images that when you play them back really quickly, it looks like they're moving, right? And the thing is that your subconscious or your brain can store images without you knowing. Because if images are put in between those frames, you can flash something and you won't see it, but your subconscious sees it and it records it. And so when you watch a movie, for example, back in the day when they were experimenting with um, subliminal indoctrination, it's like, let's see how we can mind control people. So you'd watch a movie, they'll put a frame of, say, popcorn or a particular drink, a beverage in between. And then when the breaks came, the people will go out and buy the messages that were advertised through those frames. And this is how subliminal programming is done. So when we say that you're watching the televisions or tell lies visually, your visual records things. Your What you're calling senses, which are really perception or the awareness, you're aware of it but there is the sub which you're not aware of. And so meditation allows you to sit down, cut out all distractions, focus, concentrate, and then open that, what we call the, you know, your third eye, to receive out formation. 
and to be able to then utilize that information and to also um, subdue the messages that are there and even learn how to get rid of the messages that are stored um, in your what we call junk DNA or they refer to as junk DNA because you do have a lot of information. So um, there are different forms of meditation. We actually cover it. Um, we, co we cover it in our book and you can do the online course straight away as you may have seen um, before. So yeah, log into the website now and we talk about the meditation in great detail. But it's really about you taking control and anybody can do this, anybody that is interested in doing this. The funny thing about the meditation is that some people think, oh, it doesn't, it doesn't work. And they will sit down for like a few minutes, cross their legs, close their eyes and think that's it. it it's, it's deeper than that. It's something that you've got to be convicted with. It's something that you have to practice. It's something that when you get the results, because everything you do ultimately has to be the results and you're the only person who's going to know the results. So when you do things that agitate your mind, yeah, again, funnily, um, I've actually got, you know, these are my personal copies, so they might look a bit used because I actually read them. The Mind, yeah, the book is called The Mind by Parnabab Yanun that covers, your mind is the most powerful thing you have. It is also elusive. It's, it doesn't like to be watched. It doesn't like you to be focused on it because it, it's, it's, a, it's a beast to control, right? And so when you sit down to meditate, you start to get all of these distractions, all the thoughts that you may have had throughout the day, things that you've stored, things that you've got from movies, um, you know, just things you've stored all, all throughout your life. And so when you sit to meditate, all these thoughts start to come into your mind to distract you. And you have to constantly, not try, you have to work with it. This is another thing that's very important. Every single cell, bacteria, um, what people might refer to as parasites, your organs, everything is alive. And it's, it's something you've got to be in harmony with or work with. So don't try and control the mind. Try and persuade it. Try to talk to it. Tell it, you know, I know you want to keep thinking about the bills. I know you want to think about the problems. I know you want to think about the stress. But for now, I just want to get rid of all of that and focus inwards and focus on myself because I have an objective to attain. Why do you want to bring the mind to that state because then you can use your thoughts to manifest anything you want because you have to tap into that energy, pull it down because that's what we ultimately everything we're talking about here vibrates is dealing with energy and with energy there are different levels of energy in different forms and what you're doing is tapping into that, that power. Um, when I mentioned about Hinduism and, Ju um, and Buddhism, because they teach these things like transcendental meditation and you know you can sit down and concentrate. Some people can meditate for hours um, and leave their physical body because when you start to meditate you start to focus on like your heartbeat, your organs, you slow the, the vibration down, you get in tune with your breath and then you go into different what they call waveforms like alpha wave or you know you go down and down to the point where you're so relaxed that you can actually be in many places at once um, and be aware of it. So your physical body can be there stationary, um, but you can leave and come back to your body at will. So there's a lot to meditation. It's a good question. Um, and um, I'm glad that people are starting to ask those types of questions that go beyond, you know, just the, the dogmas of, of religion. But let's hear what the second question is. Of course, there's always more. So tune in, tune in to us, tune in to our same vision constantly. Uh, next question. The second question is about the subconscious mind. Oh, How, wow, that's amazing. If you know uh, methods or, or what's your opinion about reprogramming your subconscious mind? I know that the subconscious mind is the part of our mind that controls, I should say, everything. If not, if not, everything okay so that's the second question i already started to touch on that so that's good again sub as i was saying subconscious mind he, he explained it that 
it controls everything. It controls more than you know. And this is why when people are trying to eradicate like habits or, do you know what I mean, things that are in control of them, they don't realise it's because it's a lot of it's subconscious. So the question is great. So as I said before, it's, it's sub because it's underneath, it's under, it's hidden, it's there and it's it's working and controlling you, but you're not even aware that it's there unless you consciously say to yourself, right, let's tap into the subconscious mind. Let's, let's see. And this goes back to traumas, to things that, you know, you've been through in your entire life that you can't, like, get over. And it's because it's all there, but it's hidden. So you have to be able to take control or work with your subconscious mind. That's why I said, like, when we were saying about, you know, working with your with your mind, it's about negotiating with even like parasites, you might think bacteria. There are many life forms that live within you that are just as important. And um, if you don't work with them, because you know, you might say you got good bacteria and you got bad bacteria. You got bacteria in your body that's been there, living there for for time. And um you know, they've got families and everything. This is why when you kill them, as in when people might do something like, let's say, let's do a colon cleanse. And um, you, you cleanse, but you might also kill some of the good bacteria. So there are processes and intelligence to how you do things. And so that you can replace the good ones. Even like, you know, with chemotherapy, because when you're dealing with cells, remember, um, I break down that, you go from pure energy. Energy in its purest form is ether. And when I said in the previous question that when you get to Hinduism and Buddhism, you don't go to the African spirituality. And I gave those levels, meaning that when you're tapping into what you're calling God or trying to tap into the universe or get some power outside of yourself, you have to connect with, with these higher beings and the highest are the Natharu or the Ethereum beings, which are the highest forms of beings on the nine ether. And then they, the beings come down. So that's what you're really doing. You're tapping into the nine ether. Um, not everybody can reach the nine levels. Some are like, like I said, I gave the, you know, the, the different realms and you can tap into the, the higher realms. And de depending on how you develop yourself, your spiritual being, you know, your other beings, then you, you start to access more and access more. So the subconscious is a very important aspect that people don't know and they struggle with things like, okay, I wanna achieve something, but there are things in the subconscious, in the hidden, in the underneath, in your inner being that you have to work on. So if you can't you know, get rid of being angry all the time or you know, just different things, um, things you want to overcome that you want to have power over. If you struggle with that, it could be weight, it could be anything. And you have to know that it's a lot of it is in the subconscious mind and the subconscious of your being. So yeah, that's how you do it is through practice. Consistency um, is one because you have to do it regularly. You can't just meditate one day and that's it. You have to try and say, I'm going to make time every day or every week or every month, whatever the frequency is, you're gonna, it's that important that you're gonna go, okay, I'm gonna dedicate 10 minutes, 20 minutes, half an hour. This is why when you wake up in the morning, you should not just jump out and start moving, you know, in the rat race, as they say. You should take time to reflect, to program yourself or reprogram yourself because you've been programmed with a lot of external ideas, suggestions, pictures, movies. And so you have to be aware of it that you're calm. You're in a state that you're not in a chaotic state. So you reflect and you, this is why people who plan and write things down and have a you know, vision board and things like that, because it's also about reflection and projection. We have a book called Reflection and Projection because you can tap into your subconscious mind because sometimes these images that are stored in your subconscious mind, they're like, like negatives in a, um, when, you, when you used to process pictures, you know, without the digital ones, like the analog pictures, you'd have to 
use the negative so you can keep reproducing the pictures. So like that blueprint or that, that print that's in those negatives, it's like that with your mind. So you have to be able to go, okay, these messages, these things I've stored are part of the programming. So you have to reprogram yourself and then you cleanse out and you get rid of the memory, etc., etc. So yeah, um, I hope that's answered the question, but if not, um, get hold of the book. I'm sure it has, but if you want more details, shall I say, get hold of the book called um, Projection and Reflection. All right, next question. And the third question is about forgiveness. Why is it so hard and why should I forgive? That's it. Nice to meet you guys. You are very, very, very helpful. And I hope you can grow in numbers very fast. I'm from Chile. Salute. Salute. Salute from Chile. Wow, that's amazing. Let me answer the question and I'll touch on some of the points you made. Forgiveness. Yeah, that's a very good question. You can't forgive anyone. Um, in every sense of the word, when you really think about it, because, again, that's a religious concept. You can't forgive someone because, one, why do you think it's your responsibility to forgive? When you say you forgive someone, what you have to remember, like I gave the nine levels, right? There are beings, higher beings, higher intellectual beings, higher um, what people may refer to when they use terms like God and Allah and, you know, all these beings. They're talking about higher beings, right? Who are responsible for more than us. They're responsible for the planet. They're responsible for the galaxies. They're responsible for the solar system. They're responsible for the cosmos. And they're different species, different beings. That's why different races, different races have contact and their own ancestors and their own extraterrestrials. And the highest, obviously, going to be the African and the Teru, because they were here first on the planet and outside, right? But these are the beings that are responsible for what you're calling forgiveness. So when you think you're forgiving someone, all you're doing is temporarily transferring the guilt from them to yourself. Because natural nature and these higher forces are responsible. People refer to that when they don't actually know what's going on as karma. This is why people will say, if you do me something or do something negative or bad to me, um, I will leave it and you are going to get the karma, which means that the process and the way the universe works is that there's, for every action, there's, a, a, there's an equal, equal reaction. And this is when we're starting to deal with energies that, you know, sometimes you don't have to do anything, but because of the emotional connection, and how you feel, because people go, you made me angry, or you um, upset me, or you did something that really affected me. And what you're saying there is that that energy that you've stored within yourself, and you have to let it go, you have to be able to eradicate it. And you holding that energy is not good for you. So what you have to be able to do is transform that energy, yeah, to positivity or like, if someone sends you negative, you transfer it using you, you are the alchemy that you can perform to transform that energy and send it back out into the world or to the person in positive energy. Because some people will be like, um, I'm going to return it to sender. But you're just as bad because if I send you something bad and you send it back to me, then you've just done what I did to you. So this is why love or we say in our language are shook which is divine love, unconditional love, um, is where those beings on the planet that are elevating, they transcend people, places and things. They transcend lower emotions. So this emotion is recorded and stored in your DNA, in your genes, in your cells, in your being. So that's why sometimes it takes people a long time to be able to let go of things and forget about it because it's stored, as you said before, as well, in your subconscious. So you have to remember that it's not for you to dish out punishment, for lack of a better word. Um, it's for you to raise yourself, raise your vibration, raise your consciousness, raise yourself, and let those beings that are vibrating or on those lower vibrations and lower frequencies, they're going to have to work on themselves. And the minute you do that, 
you will find that you release that energy and then they will go through their, you know, whatever repercussions or whatever the nature and the universe decides for them to have, that's what they're going to get. This is why you can't do the work of, for lack of a better word, God or Allah or these deities, because you have people that say these gods, as we know, the, the word in today, in 2024, these are extraterrestrials or beings or higher level that are vibrating on different realms. That, that they call them gods and angels and that they will say, for example, uh, a Muslim might go, and again, this is not just Muslims, Christians do it, Jews do it, everybody does it. When I, when I quote like Muslims or Christianity, it's all religion because religions cause divisions, fights, and they decide to blow up things um, because they're like, I'm going to take revenge. But then they also say in their books that vengeance is the Lord. So if the Lord or the God or the, you know, the deity is able to fight his own battles because you say he's all powerful, he's almighty, etc. Why do you need to go and blow up a building or drop a bomb on people or kill people in defense of your deity that is supposed to be so powerful that he can do that for himself. Um, so I'm saying that to say, you, you have to forgive yourself more than anything in terms of work on yourself, eradicate that negativity, that energy, because all it's gonna do is weigh you down and hold you down and hold you back. Yeah, so leave um, the, the judgment, if you wanna use that term, to those who are the, you know, they've been given that power to be the the judges, so you're not the judge. Um, I know some people are going to say, if somebody does me something, I'm going to not turn the other cheek. Defense is completely different. Like you're, you're within your sovereign being, you're able to protect yourself just like everybody else. So I'm not, we're not saying that you shouldn't protect yourself. Of course, you will protect yourself if you're being attacked. But most martial arts, anyone who's studied martial arts, they don't teach you to be the, um, the offense or the attacker. You're, you're the defense. You're utilizing it to protect yourself, you know, not to destroy. And, um, and that's basically what I'm saying, that in terms of forgiveness, you yourself can't forgive anyone. If you do, all you're saying is, I take the guilt from that person for a while and delay it because ultimately the... Um, the natural nature or, as I, I say, people use terms like the universe or karma will actually do what it's going to do, regardless of what you think on your, le on your level and the lower vibrations, um, that the lower vibrations are what deals with things like, you know, anger and, you know, fighting and chaos and killing each other. But just to, um, just to thank you for your three questions. And you have to realise um, you're from Chile. Um, we're getting people from all over the world, New Zealand, Australia, Africa, Jamaica. Just read the comments and you will see. Um, and even on our lives, you hear people calling us from all over the world. It's beautiful when we see and hear people that are transcending, like I said, people, places and things. Because when you shed your, your, um, your skin suit, you're vibrating and thinking, that's when your mentality is on a higher level. And Wu Sabat, Wu Sabat is on a high level, you know, like these are the like schools, like religions and so they're like going to um, nursery, kindergarten, like that, you know, you might call it in America. That's a very low level, very low vibration and you have to master it. And we do answer questions from everyone. That's why we say, ask us anything. However, we have to start raising our vibration as beings that are elevating on a planetary and on a galactical level. We, you know, we have to start knowing that there's a vast cosmos out there. So I like your questions um, and I like the fact that you know, we're reaching people all over the world. And if this has um, helped you, please send your questions in. Yeah, just, it's, you know, you've got a, a smartphone, just Film yourself, um, ask three questions, go on osmvision.wetransfer.com, upload your video with your three questions, and we will answer them. If you're local 
and you're in the UK, you can come down and have the opportunity to ask us these questions live. Um, we want to say Tawu Tak, that's for Mel, Tawu Kum, which is thank you everyone, thank you all. And as usual, you know, we have many books that address the, the questions that people are asking and this is um, one that's very, very good, it's called The Breath. Because when you're meditating, as I mentioned, like you have to control your breath. You have to be in tune with your heartbeat. You start to be aware of your surroundings. Um, and this is an excellent book. Of course, with Wu Sabat, we have, um, we have our own language. Because when you're saying and, you know, saying tones and words, because some meditation, you can do like a... Uh, um, an om chant or a tone in the background or you can use certain mantras and when you're doing or using those mantras you're actually invoking these beings on higher levels so our language we have our own language which is you know very useful because you have to use the right tones to connect with those higher beings um, and so you know the language is very important this is why we push um, I mean I didn't give you the title this is called the language of time um, because obviously tone, vibration and frequencies are very important when it comes to meditating, chanting and mantras. Uh, you need to know who you're calling on because a lot of times people are calling on the wrong names and the wrong deities. Like I said, you know, God, this and that. And it's, um, you're really giving your energy, your connection with those beings. So it's important to know what words you're actually using, what tones you're actually uttering when you're connecting and chanting and, you know, meditating, all right? So, yeah, check us out, nashat.co.uk. Okay, so um, with the language book, we do have um, a series of, like, smaller books that you can, um, you can also um, pick up to start learning. Miss Batia, book one, two, and three. Um, you know, they're quite small for, for newcomers, as well as, you know, the language of time which is a bit more thicker and, um, you know, goes into more detail. Um, so, yeah, if you do want to learn and um, learn the language, we also have online platforms that, um, we, you know, we share in our Telegram group. So make sure, if you haven't joined our Telegram group, we're actually, we're going to share all our links um, in the comment section. Um, you know, we have many, many, many avenues that you can connect with us so you can ask us questions live, by chat, by video, um, and yeah, we're still looking for more people to come and have those conversations. Um, don't be shy, don't be scared, don't be, you know, we don't bite, we're loving people, just come and have a conversation if you have anything you would like to, to discuss with us. But ultimately, we stand on Wusabat. Wusabat to the world. Wusabat is the future. That's going to be my mantra now. Wusabat is the future. Wusabat to the world. Until next time, peace and love.